90,000 people are waiting for the call, confirming that they will receive a new kidney. But some will never get one. In fact, 1,000 people a month are removed from the wait list, either because they die while waiting for a kidney or because they become too sick for a transplant. It's a sad reality. Now, a North Carolina teacher helped one of her former students actually move up on that list. She donated her kidney to a stranger so he could move up on the national wait list. Francis Weller with our sister station in Wilmington shows us their unique bond. In the fall, he got some bad news and he was like, I'm gonna be on the transplant list again. And I just felt a call. Laura Aikens, a PE teacher at Pender High School and a pastor's wife, says her faith told her she would be okay. I have a very healthy life and I'm blessed beyond measure. But her former student, Khalid Beatty, would not be okay without another kidney transplant. Khalid was born with a chronic kidney disease. I was born with hydronephrosis. So basically that is where the urine from the kidney, from the bladder, goes into the kidneys, filters, and go right back into the kidneys. His now eight-year-old kidney is no longer doing what it needs to. A kidney transplant can last anywhere from 8 to 25 years, depending on whether it's a living or deceased donor. Laura was willing to give him one of hers and surprised him one day on the track. Come here. Actually, I just got approved. <laughs> I got approved. <laughs> And as we went through the process, I was approved as a donor, but I wasn't approved for him. Thanks to a voucher program started at UCLA in 2014, Laura would be able to donate a kidney to a complete stranger in exchange for moving Kalik up on the National Registry. The Beatty's ecstatic, but Laura's husband, Gardner? Now, to be fair, initially, the, the, the fleshly side of me, because that was my wife, I was like, oh, well, we need to talk about this more. We need to talk about this more. Uh, but then, you know, through our conversation, she just she said it was just as clear as if you spoke to me. And I said, well, if that's the case, I am not going to stand in your way. So on July 29th, just in from vacation, Laura headed to Duke to give up a completely healthy kidney to a complete stranger. We landed in Charlotte at about... 7.30 and then my friend and I drove up to Duke and my husband met us there. I had to report to the ER at 4 o'clock. That was 4 o'clock a.m. She was in the operating room at 6 for a surgery that lasted about three hours. While both Laura and her husband, also a teacher, have taught Kalik, the bond is with the entire family. I have to be honest, it's not always, I have not always been strong. I've had my good days, I've had my bad days. I've had days that I, somebody will just look at me and say something and I would cry. Kalik's parents have faced some major challenges. From the time Kalik was born, he was in and out of the hospital. I can say I was in the hospital more than I was in school. Laura was coaching Kalik's brother in 2016 when she first met the Beatty family. We also met the Beatty family back then. Kalik was waiting on the kidney he now has when devastation hit. Hurricane Matthew flooded their home. Despite losing it all, though, in December of that year, he got a kidney. He shared with us back then what he told his doctor. The first thing I, I told my daughter, said, I told him, don't, don't screw this up. <laughs> it's been 10 years, I do not want this to mess up. The surgery went well, but heartache would strike again. In 2018, this is what Hurricane Florence did to their home, just two years after Matthew. They were forced to move out even when the water receded because of the mold and the risk to Kalik's health. He recalls that being one of the lowest times in his life back then, despite his new kidney. I thought if I stopped taking my medication and just slowly die that they can go ahead and get a house and not worry about me. It was Pastor Akins, who he calls dad, who helped him through many dark days. Many times we've been in the parking lot in, in Burgall and 
we just stop right there. We hold hands. We pray and cry and love upon each other. Even with last Sunday, I asked them, don't let me get lost on my way to college. Don't let me forget who I am or where I come from. On his way to college, at last check, Kalik was enrolling at UNC Charlotte, still awaiting a new kidney. It won't be Laura's kidney, but it will be because of the woman he calls his second mom. Incredible story.